Hi everyone, this is Debbie from Project 30 and Mini Albums. This is the third in the series of videos. This is the tutorial for the mini album for the Simple Stories, Simple Vintage Lakeside Paper Collection. Look for links in the description box. All right, let's get started with making the cover. For the cover, you're going to need two pieces of chipboard, five and a half by six and a half, and one piece that's three by five and a half. So the spine will be three by five and a half. Now I have already put score tape on the back of those just to make uh, the coverage a little bit better so it, so it really sticks well. And I'm going to get out my scoreboard and I'm going to attach the five and a half by six and a half inch pieces so we add two inches to both sides. So instead of five and a half by six and a half, you need a piece of cardstock seven and a half by eight and a half. And we're going to actually, no, it doesn't matter. But we are also going to use spacers. And these are one inch spacers available from Country Craft Creations. These make making an album cover and doing other things very easy. I will go ahead and grab my little pokey tool to take my um, score tape backing off. It just sort of digs in there and gets it off. I've already burnished this real, real well. It's very important. So now I will take this, making sure my cardstock is up against the top and the side, and same with the spacers. Turn this over and I push it up against the side and go to the top and press down. Now I'll burnish this in a second. I just want to get them all on first. So I'll do the same with the other one. I just put my pokey tool down. Where did I put it? Here it is. It does help, I guarantee you. It's just operator error. All right, so I'll take this again, making sure my cardstock is pushed up into the side, and same with my spacers, and I just put it down. So you get a one inch border all the way around it, which is fabulous. And then when you're doing the spine piece, you want to make sure that there is an inch and a half on each side. So you'll add three inches to the side measurement and uh, two inches, so one inch top and bottom for the top and bottom measurements. So this was a three inch piece, so we needed a six inch piece of cardstock. And for this, instead of using a one inch spacer on the side, really use an inch and a half. That just gives you a little extra room to add this to the cover when it gets to that, which will be very quickly. All right, so I will take this piece and it gets, again, go to the side and push it down. So we are done with the spacers for now. And I'm going to take my and burnish it. Make sure it's real tight up against the paper. I'm taking my uh, stylus or scoring tool, whatever you want to call it, and just going against the sides on all three of these pieces. I mean, I want to get a nice crisp fold after this, and I sort of feel like this does um, help train the paper a little, although you can barely see it. There's that one. And there's that. All right, now I'm going to take my 
chipboard on the back of the cardstock and push it down against my work surface and then take my bone folder and burnish on that fold. So we'll do that for all four sides for all three pieces. I'm using the black artisan cardstock just because I'm using black for the uh, creel, the fishing creel, but the um, olive from Country Craft Creations would go fabulous with this lakeside collection from Simple Stories. Uh, so with the craft color and I think the off-white would go really well. I mean, I really had my, I really wasn't sure what color to use, but then ultimately when I realized I'm using black chipboard for the creel, they, well, you know what, let's just keep it all consistent. And also I think at that point I had decision fatigue and I didn't know what I was going to do. All right, I'm going to grab my scissors and we are going to cut out the rectangles that you can see very plainly made by scoring on those folds. So I'm being real careful not to go too far, but you know what? The beauty of this way of covering is that even if you, I mean, you really can't mess it up. So I'm going to cut all four of these rectangles off. And then what I'm going to do is fold one side, put my scissors against the chipboard, and cut off whatever comes up. And it is going to be just a smidgen of paper. But what this prevents is that there's no overhang. And when we fold our cardstock and glue it, and I'm turning it upside down, so then I can do this side too. Uh, it's just going to fold that much easier and there won't be any overhang on the chipboard. See how here there's uh, a little extra, it comes out a little bit more. That was a bigger piece. But that's all I got out of it. Not, not very much, but just enough to um, just enough to make sure it's going to fold easily. All right, and again, I'm just going to cut my four corners. Sometimes I'll use an X-Acto to do this, sometimes scissors. Just whatever in the, you're in the mood for. And I only used, so far at last count, and that's making the cover, making the pages, and making the elements on the pages. I have not done anything with the inside, front, and back cover yet. But I've only used 17 pieces of the cardstock to make the book. And I've used whoops, uh, scraps from that to make the creel. I haven't, well, scraps and that includes one page that I use for the creel. So um, it doesn't take up that much cardstock. It's not a huge mini album. Number one, I didn't want to make the creel too big and number two I wanted to make sure the mini album fit in the book and I wanted to make sure that it would fit four by six photos now the pages are five by six so yes you still can put a four by six photo on the page but you will probably want to trim it down to make it about four by five just that way there's an even border so um, usually fishing and maybe hunting. I wouldn't know. I don't hunt. But fishing pictures, there is going to be some extra room in it. And if if they're all portrait, then you can just cut it down to four by four when you get the pictures printed out. And that will fit in nicely and still give you room to journal on the sides of the pages if you want to as well. 
So I imagine this would be a good Father's Day or birthday gift. Um, that's just how I envision it. Okay, now, um, so I've got it all trimmed and see how it does uh, cut it at a slight angle once you do that. So what I'm going to do is take my liquid adhesive, and that's what I choose to use. Uh, if you don't want to use liquid adhesive, you don't have to. And I'm going to hope the glue comes out and add some glue down along the side of the chipboard. So I have a bead of glue just along the side of the chipboard. And then I will put some around the rest of the perimeter of that and add some on the side. Now I'm going to take my bone folder and this is a dress your craft non-stick bone folder and I've got this angle here which I'm going to take and push up against my uh, chipboard and the glue will seep out which is fine and then I'm pulling it over with my fingers and burnishing. And you see more glue comes out there. That is okay, too. I will grab my cloth to take it off. And what this is is a, uh, a baby wipe that I have rinsed in water and let dry. And by rinsing it, you get out a lot of the lint. There's still some lint in there, but, you know, it depends on what brand you use. And I don't know what brand this is. I've had it so long that it's in a Ziploc bag. It's long, long ago dried. But I'm sure there are some brands better than others for lint. You, you want as least amount of lint as possible. I'm guessing ones that aren't as soft might have more lint. I don't know. Okay, so I've got the two long sides done. Now I'm going to work on the two short sides. I will add my glue up against the edge of the chipboard on the top and down the side. And I push it up against there, pull it down with my fingers. This time I want to make sure that the glue comes out, not on the edge. I mean, it's no big deal if it does. But this way I can clean it up and you won't see the glue. So do the same here, along the edge of the chipboard. You don't need that much of the Art Institute Dries Clear Designer Glue. Just a little bit helps. And that is my glue of choice. I've heard many people use different kinds. So you use what works for you. Okay. Now that I've done that, I'm going to lay it on its side, or put it on its side, and take my bone folder and just go across here, just to, you know, I do this all the time. I feel like it makes a more finished cover. Does anyone notice it? Probably not, but I like to do it. It makes me feel productive. Okay, so now... I am going to do two sides at once with the glue. So take my bone folder, go up against there. Do the two short sides. There's a string from the chipboard I pulled off. Oops. Now 
that is what I did not want to do. Get all the glue seeping out, but again, didn't want to do it. But in the grand scheme of things, it's not going to be even noticed, I'm sure. You'll notice it if you make a mistake, but nobody else will. Not that it's a mistake, just messy. Okay, going to do that. And so that is the front and back cover. All right, we're going to do something different with our spine piece. We are going to uh, put in the two short sides. Don't do the two long sides. My computer wasn't plugged in and it was dinging at me. I didn't realize it wasn't plugged in. Sometimes when you travel in an RV, things, uh, you have to double check connections. And I didn't on the computer, but it is okay now. All right, so we're gonna do the two short sides, same as we do everything else, glue it down Clean it up if you get any glue seepage. Okay, now don't do the long wings of this. I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to push down with my bone folder to train the paper to go right next to that spine piece, next to that chipboard. And then I'm going to add a little bit of glue in there. So I'd have to push that down. And I'll do the same for the other side because I'll work it fairly quickly. If you're not sure what you're doing, do one side at a time. And then I'm going to push it up against that chipboard. Gonna take off some of that excess glue. And I'm just going to let it dry that way. I want this to dry onto the chipboard. So just going to leave it like that. And then going to wait a couple of minutes before I put everything together. In the meantime, um, well, let's just wait till that's dry. Okay. The glue is dry on here. So I'm going to take my uh, five and a half by six and a half pieces and lay them aside for just a second and I'm going to uh, take this piece and put it up against the top and the side. I want to make sure it's as straight as can be. Um, well I guess before I do that so I'm taking my one of my spacers and they're transparent so you can see through it and I'm putting it up on the spine so it so the edge of the chipboard is there and I'm going to put this a little over so this is about uh, maybe an eighth of an inch over where the chipboard is and then I'm going to take my glue and draw a line because I can't draw a straight line with a glue pencil or whatever and then fill in this all right so you don't have glue right next to the the chipboard piece it's about an eighth of an inch away and then I'm going to take one of the covers and I'm going to slowly move it Till it drops down and push it down so it is right up against that chipboard spine I'm turning this over and I'll burnish it's a spine piece so you know that's like integral to the 
construction of your album. I got a dot of glue I wiped off. Okay, now we're going to do the same with this side. I'm going to put that up against it so it's about an eighth of an inch away from the spine. Draw a line and then fill this in. You don't need much. It'll stick. Now, I can't go all the way up here because I won't have room here. So I'm going to slide it over and then take this piece. My spine is right up against the top of my scoreboard. Come here. Pull it down and then stop it. Make sure it's on straight. And then I'll turn it over and burnish. Just make sure that adhesive will work its way in. And now this is flat. You can't, you know, I mean there's a little bit of extra paper here, but it's still flat. And when you open it, it's it's a beautiful, crisp, clean look. Now, to make sure that it's uh, strong on there, all right, where's my little piece? I have a piece that's four and a half by five and a half. Now, you could make it wider than four and a half. It just happened to be a scrap I have left. And I am going to add adhesive. First of all, I'm going to take some glue and put glue down here. I don't want to go too close to the edge because I don't want to um, have it seep out. And then I'm going to fill this in with glue. Now, more glue here than normal because this is... Uh, the hinge is going to rest on here, and I want to make sure it sticks. So I will put it down. And if you worry about if any comes over, just cut it down a smidgen less than uh, five inches. Like four and 31, 30 seconds. You know, just a smidgen less. By doing this, you're going to give it a good base to put the uh, hinge system on. So I'm not going to fold this up yet. I'm going to let it dry, and then we'll fold it up before I put on the hinge. So let's do the hinge. So for the hinge, I have a four and a half inch piece. Now it could be the pages are five. It could be five inches, but I am going to make it four and a half. So I don't have to worry about the pages fitting on. You'll see. So I'm going to put the 12 inch side at the top and I'm going to score um, six pages. So there will be two sets of half inch and then one three eighths of an inch between. And I know on my scoreboard where that's going to be because I took a marker and put the lines on here just so it helps me remember where to go. I mean, you've done it, if you've done it as many times as I had, it just comes natural. But still, when I'm doing tutorials, it makes it easier. So again, I have the four and a half inch side to the side and the 12 inch side at the top. And I'm going to start at two, do two and a half, three, three and three eighths, four, three and seven eighths, four and three eighths four and three quarters, five and a quarter, five and three quarters, six and one eighth, six and five eighths, seven and one eighth, seven and a half, eight, eight and a half, eight and seven eighths, nine and, I don't have the line so I have to think, nine and three eighths, 
and 9 and 7 eighths. So you've got half, half, 3 eighths, half, half, 3 eighths. So that'll be a gusset, gusset, oh, I'm sorry, hinge, hinge, gusset, hinge, hinge, gusset. Getting out my little little board here. So I'm still got the indentations facing down. The bumps are on the bottom. I am going to fold up in between each half inch piece where there's a pair. So there's half half here. So I'm going to fold in the center. I'm not only going to fold, but I'm going to burnish. And then I'll open it up. Now I have two more half inch pieces here. So I will fold in the center. I'm folding it this way because I'm making sure the sides are straight. So I have another half inch piece here. Fold in the center of those. We'll do that some more. Make sure it's straight side to side and burnish and continue. And then there's one more. So that is folded. So you can see there's slight mountains and valleys. Now what I'm going to do is hold this down with my thumbs and my fingers. And I'm going to actually push it with my thumbs, pull it with my fingers, so that mountain that we scored on comes even higher. And then I'm going to pinch that together and fold at the base of those two half inch pieces. So it'll stand up. Now there's no glue. We're just training the paper at this point. I'm going to do the same with the next one. And the next one. And the next one. I'll tell you, it is easier if you don't have long fingernails. Sometimes it feels like the fingernails get in the way. Okay, it's not perfect, but it's not glued. I'm going to turn it over. And what I do is I usually do them all at one time. But let's just start with one. And do one at a time. Okay. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take glue, and so we've turned it over, so there is sort of a valley. When it's this way, facing up, it's a mountain. So I'm going to add glue in there, not right up to the edge. I'm leaving about an eighth inch from the edge, but I am getting as close to the top of the paper as I can. I'm going to use this on my surface, push it down, and squeeze that together. So now we have our first hinge and it's glued together. I'm going to burnish at the end, so don't worry about that. All right, we'll do the next one. Turn it over and squeeze it together. If any glue seeps out, make sure you clean it up. So we have four more to do. And I just put the glue on one side of the hinge. You don't need both sides because, again, you don't need too much glue. There we go. Two more and then we're done. So again, we're putting it on one of those half inch pieces. pinching them together until we know the glue is holding it and then let it then move on to the next one. I'm still working fairly quickly because I want to burnish it all before the glue is completely dry. Okay, so now I'm going to push all the hinges one way and burnish with my bone folder the edge of it. And see some of the glue is seeping out. So I'm going to wipe that up. And more of the 
glue seep down because I went all the way over to that. Now I'll turn them all another way, turn them all facing away from me, and do the same thing. No glue seeped out, so we're good. So do it four or five times until you feel like they're adhered and trained and they're all together. So you turn this over and they're pretty close together. There still is a little bit room in between them but we're going to take care of that. I'm in a campground and it's morning and there are kids out on their bikes, which is great. I love seeing kids play. But if they're screaming, it's because the kids are screaming. Um, they're not my kids. Um, all right, so now I'm going to work on the covers and we've glued this down and it's dry now. So I'm going to take the blunt part of my bone folder. Be careful you don't use a point, anything sharp. I wouldn't use this. That would rip through the paper. And I'm I'm just uh, scoring where the two, the spine and the page meet. And then I'm going to bend the page up and make sure that it'll lay down flat. And do the same with the other side. And honestly, with this uh, Country Craft Creation Artisan cardstock, it sort of works like butter. There is not a problem. And isn't that a beautiful cover? How that is just so perfect there. Beautiful. And you could, if you wanted to decorate that with pattern paper, you could put something over the top of it. All right, now I'm going to take my hinge piece and decide exactly where I want it. And I'm just going to center it on here. So I have about a half inch from top to bottom. I mean, from top of the hinge to the top of the spine and from the bottom of the hinge to the bottom of the spine. So I know if I want it centered half an inch and half an inch from the score line of where the, the page opens to where this first hinge is and same for here. Now, if you know you're going to have more things towards the back of the book, you want to, you might want to move it over. But at this point, I don't. It's going to be pretty even. So I am going to turn that over and add my adhesive first in the crevice where the two half-inch hinges come together. This will do two things. It'll make sure that it uh, adheres and also it is moist and it will give it a little wiggle room while you're uh, putting it on your book. And then I'll fill in the part. And again, you see I'm staying away from the very edge because the glue will seep and cover that. And if I put it on the edge, we know we're going to get lots of glue seeping. All right, I'll put some on the other side of the last hinge. Fill in half an inch and then go an inch. Oops. I'm still leaving a little room for my fingers to hold this and working fairly quickly. So I know that I want half an inch on all four sides. I'm eyeballing it. I used to draw a line, use a T-square, do all sorts of things, but I'm pretty comfortable with just eyeballing it. I have a little piece of glue here. Okay, this is how I do the next part of it. I've just laid it down. I haven't burnished it. There's an even number of spines of hinges, so I start with the center. And I use my finger and push down to make sure that is adhered. And then I go to the right or left and move one piece over and do the same with the gusset between. And then I go back over to that side and push it down back and forth. Then I'll go over to the left again and move that 
hinge all the way almost flat down and then go back over to the second to the last hinge on the right side pushing that down and then I'll do the last hinge on the left and then the last hinge on the right and the paper moves a little bit when you do that all right using my non-stick bone folder and going right at the seam where the hinge adheres to the paper and just pushing down. If you don't have a non-stick bone folder, be very careful you don't make marks on your paper and be careful you don't use a sharp point. Did you see some glue seeping out? I did. There's not much, not much to worry about. Okay, and then I'll take my bone folder and burnish. If there's a lot of room, I would probably add some glue under there where I had my place where my fingers were holding it. But it's okay, because you're going to cover this up. Now I am going to, once it dries, um, fold the book up to make sure that the um, that we can uh, score a line where the hinge and the cover meet, but I'm going to let it dry before I do that. In the meantime, I'm going to varnish that, move them over the other way, and varnish, and just do it a couple of times just to train the paper. If you have an inferior paper, it may not work as well as using this artisan cardstock, but that's fabulous. Okay, I'm done with this for now. I'm gonna let it dry. The next thing I'll do with this is start folding and burnishing again here at that seam. But let's make pages in the meantime. So I'll need my scoreboard. And for the pages, I will need, there are six pages. So I need six pieces that are five by six and six pieces that are six by six. I'm going to move the five by six inch pieces aside and the six by six inch pieces I'm going to put on my scoreboard and score at half an inch and at five and a half. And it's six, six by six, so it didn't matter which way. So we've got uh, the two score lines on either side. Oops, there goes the cover. I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to miter the corners. Just a slight miter. So you could start at the score line, put your scissor there. It sort of naturally wants to rest there and just go up. Does it on all sides, but it does on two. So there is one of the pages. And then I will take my bone folder and fold in these flaps. And then take one of the five by six inch pieces and that is going to go right on top of where I just made these tabs. So I'll add some adhesive and then just make sure it's uh, even here at the side and put it 
down, burnish it with my fingers, and then burnish it with my bone folder. So what you're making are tubes. So we will make six of these. Let's do one more together and the rest I've already done. So we'll take that six by six and I will score it half an inch and at five and a half. I will miter on all four of these corners. I'll turn it over because I like to fold into the bump. With artisan cardstock, I don't think it makes a difference because it, it's like butter. Other inferior card stocks, it might make a difference. And then I'll add adhesive. I mean, I try to get close to the edge down the side and close to the bottom. But you can see, can't draw a straight line. And then I'll take my 5 by 6 inch piece, line it up at the side. And then line it up top and bottom. I see some glue oozed out onto my work surface, which is why I should always use something under my work surface, but this wood is so pretty. I like looking at it. So now you've got your tubes. I'm going to grab my book. And now that the glue is dried, I'm just going to gently fold it. And as I fold it up, I'm going to just gently uh, draw a line and make sure it will fold up there we go so there we go all right now I usually start from the back of the book and the first page is always most important, so I'll dry fit it. Now it's going to go on easy because the uh, hinge is half an inch smaller than the uh, page. And it's going to go down to the bottom, but then I'm going to back off a little so it's not right up next to the spine just so it has a little room to move. And then I'm going to make sure that it's even, it's parallel from the bottom of my book to the bottom of the page and the top of the book to the top of the page. If your hinge is not in straight, maybe you did not cut your hinge straight, then it's, then you sort of have to make up for it now. But you just want to make sure your hinge is straight. And it's important that you cut the paper for the hinge as straight as possible. I see a lot of people mess up there. All right, so I'm going to leave about an eighth of an inch on the bottom. So you'll fill glue two thirds of the way um, from the top down. Then you want to go sort of close to the top. Now I'm opening my tube and going over that hinge. And then again, I'm going to make sure it's even and parallel here. Grabbing my wipe because there's some a little glue. And I will burnish it. And there we go with the first page. It moves easy because we trained our hinges many times. So now I will take the next piece, add glue. 
And after I get all six pieces, I will go through with my uh, bone folder and really burnish it well. But I sort of want to move quickly when I first get these pages on. And now the second one, I'm going to line up with that first page side to side. See, I've got, I don't know, um, three thirty seconds of an inch on the bottom. And I'm going to stand this up and make sure that it's even up this way as well. And push it down. I'm just using my fingers to burnish it at this point. And I'll go ahead and get the other pages in. Again, line it up with your other. Pages, burnish it in with my fingers. If you've been watching me for a while, you may have noticed that I change the way I do things from time to time. Um, I might see someone else has a different method and I try it and I might like it. Or I might take some of the parts of their method and include it with mine. This method of uh, putting the cover together was designed by Tamara of Country Craft Creations. It is the lay flat cover method and it is fabulous. It works really well. All right, let me get at these two pages and then we'll burnish. Okay, I put in my last two pages, well, which are really my first two. And now I'm going to take my bone folder and burnish. I like to wait till everything's in so I can do that with it. But it gives you a good page construction. It, it's nice and strong. It's flat. Pages will open up. And then, and then there is our completed base album. It is no by no means done, but the base is completed. Now what I'm going to do is, I don't have, I have not figured out what I'm going to do with the front cover and the back cover. I'm going to do the page construction. And the way the pages are, the, the elements on the pages are, they're all going to be the same. So we're going to have two flaps on the front, a small one on the right side, a larger one on the left, and the back is going to have a small pocket where they flap to cover the page. The reason I wanted a large flap on the back is because I didn't want to impede anything here. I feel like I'm going to add a lot of layers to this book. I don't always, but I have a lot. I have the nature bit nature bit. So it's going to be, I see bears and butterflies and dragonflies, a moose, some mushrooms. So I'm going to layer a lot with that. I also have the bits and pieces, which has a lot more verbiage. So um, I'm probably going to use that. And then I have this page pieces from Simple Pages. I got that just because it had bigger words and I sort of like that. I may or may not use them. I also made the pages big enough that I can use these cut-aparts. Like the, the cut-apart on this side, the flap will come over and it'll be about three inches. So I can add one of the cut-aparts here. I mean, Big Fish Story would be perfect as a cut-apart. Uh, and since this is four inches and the page is five, I might use that as a pocket. I haven't, once I put the page together, then I'll um, be able to play with it a little bit more. 
So that was my idea, and I wanted to make the pages the same because when you make the pages the same, it goes fast. Now you could just take this one page if you wanted to um, and add different page styles, but I always start with a base album and add to it. And don't forget, these are pocket pages, so you can put in something. Um, I'm going to put in a, um, a photo mat that you can put, hopefully, a 4x6 photo right on there. So we will be doing that as well. All right, so the next step will be doing the elements on the pages. Okay, for the fronts of all the pages, I have cut uh, flaps for the left-hand side that's going to be a little bigger and the right-hand side that's going to be a little smaller. So you'll need six pieces of cardstock that is five by four and five eighths and six pieces that is five by three and five eighths. So we will grab one of each. I'm not going to take the one with the braiding because sometimes that um, doesn't confuse people, but it just, the writing just gets in your way. So anyhow, I'm going to take the four and five eighths side at the top and I'm going to score at half an inch. And same thing with this, you're going to take the three and five eighths at the top and score at half an inch. I'm going to miter the corners. And then I'm going to fold and burnish on those score lines. Easy enough. So the larger piece is going to go on the left side and the smaller piece on the right. Simple enough. So add adhesive to your half inch tab. So I'm putting it on the paper, not on the hinge. Don't go onto the hinge, just keep it on the tube. So once that gets on there, then I will burnish it. Obviously, I use too much glue because it's seeping out. Of course, you're going to cover it with paper, so it's no big deal. But I don't want it sticking down at this point. Use a little bit less glue there and that's going to go on the side close to the open part of the tube make sure it's um, even on the side lined up top and bottom and I'll burnish it now there are some people who will do the pages first and add all of the uh, elements and then put it in the book afterwards. I like to get it in the book first and then uh, add the elements. So now you'll have room for a photo here and then you have room for, I think I will make this a pocket with one of the um, cut aparts. And then you could either use magnets or you could use a um, turnbuckle like a swivel tab here if you wanted to um, I'll probably use magnets so that will take six set of magnets for here and then six set of magnets for the back so you'll need 12 sets of magnets so that is a lot of magnets that's what I was thinking about the turnbuckle um, you could tie it you know, you could tie it to the page if you wanted to. Um, 
turnbuckles or magnets are usually my go-to. Or you could leave it without any um, magnet if you wanted to, because it'll stay close once you put the book together. So I am going to uh, finish the rest of it. I'm going to do that off camera because we don't need to take time. So I will score the rest of these and put it in the book and then we'll come back. Okay, we're going to do the back sides of the page and they're going to be like this. There is a flap and there is a pocket. It's a very small pocket. I wanted a flap here because I knew I was going to use a lot of embellishing on these and I didn't want it to, I didn't want the pocket to get in the way. You know, sometimes it catches. So that's why I put a big flap. So we're going to do page one and to make this you'll need two sheets. Now I cut six of course for all the pages but I've done five of them. So for the flap for the pocket you'll need a five and a half inch by six inch piece and for the pocket two by seven basically for that i just cut down a piece of 12 inch cardstock seven inches and then cut six um two inch pieces from that let's get out our scoreboard pockets are easy you're going to score on three sides two short sides and one long side so i'll put the long side at the top score it half score at six and a half, rotate, and score at half down the long side of the paper. I'm going to grab my scissors and we're going to miter on the top. And then to miter the bottom, we're just going to cut right across the X. So we will get rid of those. I'll burnish in a second. So for this, um, uh, the six inch side is at the side, five and a half is at the top. So I'm going to score with the five and a half inch side at the top at half an inch. That is it for the scoring. I'm also going to take my corner rounder. This is an old one. There's ones available at Country Craft Creations. I really need to get one. Uh, but this works and this fits in the spot that I've got for it. So until I rearrange my drawers, I am okay with that. I'm mitering the top of that and then I will fold and burnish on the score lines. So there is that. I'm going to fold that long part. Now you could make the pocket if you wanted it bigger than an inch and a half. Um, but I just kept it small. Uh, okay, book. Oh, you know what I'm going to do before I put this in? I'm going to erase my weight. Um, writing on there just because it I didn't want the paper to cover some of it so I erased just that part the paper will cover most of this but sometimes a little will stick out and it's easier to erase it before I put it on than after so for the pocket I'm just going to glue down the bottom piece first okay so I'm taking that and putting it at the bottom of the page over to the left more so than the right I mean, it should fit exact, but they don't always. And I'll open it up, and then I will grab a piece of tape. Estimate how much I need. It doesn't have to be across the whole thing. And put this in. So why do I do that? So once it's a pocket, whatever you're putting in it, if you don't cover the pocket, entirely with designer paper or if you do to help the paper go down and it won't get impinged it won't stop at where that flap is so now i will go ahead and add adhesive to these flaps and put that down and hold that for a little bit okay 
Okay, so there's the pocket. Fabulous. And now we've got our flap. Just going to dry fit it. Looks perfect. And again, I'll probably use magnets oops, to uh, hold this down. I could use those two circle tabs, but again, I don't want it to get hung up with stuff on this side. So I will just use magnets and go through. All right, so I made a mess over there, but I will clean that up real well. Push that down, burnish it. So now we have a flap and a pocket. Not very big, but it doesn't need to be. So now I'm going to decorate it and then see what I have left to do the inside covers. I was thinking of maybe just a side um, pocket here to put in photos, tickets, I don't know, whatever you might have from fishing or hunting or whatever. And I don't know what I'll have here. Maybe I'll just leave that blank and that will give you room to put a photo of everybody who attended. I think that's what I might do is leave that blank and just give you room to put a four and a half by six inch photo right there on the cover. So then that would be almost all we have to make the book. Um, so I'm going to decorate this and you've already seen the walkthrough. If I add anything, I will come back and show you what I'm adding. All right, so I think the walkthrough really went through a lot of the different elements. I didn't add too much to it. So that is all for today. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial of the mini album. It's a real quick, easy one to make. You might use it for projects besides this fishing creel. And as well, the fishing creel does add a neat touch. I'd love to see different versions of it, like a purse or just a regular box. So that is what I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe and all the other things. Thank you so much. Have a fabulous day.